My little small mom struggle is bedtime. So what I've been having a problem with is my little baby girl usually doesn't have how, much. How old is she? Uh, yeah, she's two and a half years old. And my struggle is she's a pretty easy kid, doesn't throw tantrums like most of the day, but definitely every bedtime it's like a battlefield and that's her time to like really – cry or she tries to extend bedtime like oh can I have a water can I go to the bathroom can we read another book can we do another puzzle can I have a piece of cheese can we do another song you know it's like she she wants to extend it she how long has this been going on for pretty much it's kind of her standard I'd say she's always had a little trouble with bedtime but now that she's two and a half you know she has more sophisticated needs of like means of extending it And then my personal problem is that since I work, right, bedtime is like my domain. So I'll wake up. I I work night shift, right? So I'll wake up kind of around six. I'll do dinner, bath, bedtime. That's like my, my personal time with her. So I don't know if I'm just like making it up. But in my head, I also have like super mom guilt of like, Oh, she just wants to hang out with me because, like, these are my few hours that I have with her today. And she's yeah. time with dad. And so it's, like, really hard for her to transition to mom and be like, great, you're with mom. Go to bed. I don't even know if that's true. That's just how I interpret it. So even though I'm a pretty strict mom, it's easy for me to, like, lay down the law in every other respect bedtime I want to give in I want to read more stories you know because it's like I want it to be a happy time and not this like super strict time if mm-hmm. that's only hours with her but I'm just like this is getting ridiculous you know like she keeps like staying up later and later and I I mean I have been now well, what like, time is bedtime at usually I know it's really late in our house but it's like 9 p.m in the summer okay. is like our bedtime and yeah. then She'll push it till like 9.30, sometimes even like 10, you know. When does she wake up in the morning? Nine. Okay. 9 a.m. She does like 12 hours sleeps, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. 10 or something. I mean, I know it's crazy. Every kid doesn't do, – I mean, my kid just happens to go to bed late and wake up late, but I'm sure it has a lot to do with that. I'm a nighttime nurse, so it's just like our – everybody, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you need to like, you know – explain yourself there because I I think it's really just how many like hours are they getting at night if she sleeps nine to nine or like who cares it doesn't matter yeah and she's not grumpy literally all the rest of the day it's just nighttime that she's grumpy and I just I don't know how to separate mom guilt is it this mom thing yeah is this just what two and a half year olds do and I just need to be like super stern like the last like six nights I've just been like Bedtime's at this time, no cheese, no this, no that. You know, like I, we have a routine that we follow every single time. And now I'm just like not giving in. And so she's definitely been crying. And I've definitely been like not doing, you know, what the, uh, <laughs> what is it called? The uh, sleep trainer gal said, like, I let her cry a little bit. Cause I'm just like, dude, I did everything. You're like, like you're safe. And I just feel like if I keep coming in and keep coming in, it's just going to extend, extend, extend. And so for a few nights, she's like, you know, cried herself for a good, like five, seven minutes. And then I come in and I'm like, would you like a sip of water? And I'm like, this is your last song. And then I put her down and then she's like going to bed, like, okay. And it's just like so hard on me to be like, geez. Yeah. I think with so much of these things that our mom instinct is ac- actually totally on point. Cause like from an outside perspective, and I'm just, I'm just like one person and I'm not a certified yeah. sleep consultant or integrative sleep specialist. But like knowing Layla, knowing you, I think you're on point with the fact that like she just wants mommy time or at least like in a sense, like I'm very scientifically brained. So I'm like, okay, well, why don't we like test some, let's isolate some variables and then like test them out to see if it makes an improvement. And I feel like she probably, it sounds like she does want the mom time with you. The other thing is that like, I mean, I don't know. When does she wake up from her nap during the day? She's still napping? No naps. No naps. She does quiet time. Sometimes during her quiet time, she naps. Sometimes she doesn't. It's kind of up to her. 
but she'll sit in her bed with like everything dark and then she has um she like reads usually so yeah so she's good and tired then so it's it's probably not that she's not tired i would i would say that it's because she wants to spend time with you and if you can't like i feel like you'd have two options then right like either you would set the bad time just to just to be later and schedule in like before the bedtime activities start I would keep the bedtime routine itself shorter, Mm -hmm. which you'd probably slowly have to do because all of a sudden having a short bedtime will be like confusing, you know, but like Mm -hmm. slowly try to shorten the actual bedtime activities so that it's like, I don't know, like max, like I've heard people do it in 15 minutes and I'm like, that's not going to work with my kid, but like 30 minutes, 45 minutes max, you know. But then, like, have, like, special mama and Layla time before that so she can kind of, like, fill her cup. Like, maybe even – I mean, if you're you're having dinner, like, right when you get home or right after you wake up or whatever. But, like, sometime, like, well before bedtime, you know, so that she can fill her cup. And then by the time it comes to bedtime, like, that part is already, like, done. And then she, like, knows it's sleep time. And then – trying to do as much of that I don't know earlier too well and here's a struggle I have so on the days where I do like half a day or a whole day right so like we go to the park or you know we go grocery shopping you know we have a normal day together there's no issues at bedtime but yeah the biggest is she's with some other caregiver the majority of the day and then I come in for the last like three hours and my struggle is it's really stinking hard for me to wake up even earlier to have special time with her Mm because I'm already sleep two to four hours a night very regularly. So it's like, there's no more. That's that's not an option. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm almost tempted to be like, maybe on the days I work, I just don't put her to bed. Like, is that, is it worse to have her just be super upset and then just like add more time on my long days or is I was thinking it was better for her to see me like every night, but then it feels like I'm just like upsetting her by like giving her a little taste. Like, what do you think is worse or better? I personally wouldn't do that. And and I don't know. We have, we have different parenting styles, but I feel like that. And it's not that that wouldn't be effective if your mental health is suffering to a point where you just, can't go on any, you know, like, okay, sure. Because then you have to kind of weigh pros and cons, but like, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that because she's only little for so long and she's going to look back and remember what kind of mom you were. And I think that she'll remember how involved or like not involved you were. And she's not going to be able to understand until she's well into her adulthood, the reasons why, and I think that it w- it could it, you could reap the benefits when she's like school age or a teenager and stuff. So, so like stay. Like, the- if you can't wake up earlier, like why not just purposefully make bedtime later? Like make bedtime ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. That just seems crazy to me. <laughs> I don't think it's crazy at all because if she sleeps till 930, yeah. 10 to 930, she's getting a good night's sleep. So like – and so she's two and a half. Because in my brain, going to bed at nine seemed insanely late. She doesn't have to wake up and like go to kindergarten or like, you know, she's still little. So you can the, – the, the flip side, right, is that if you want to have, you know, time with your partner – that's going to get extended later. And oh, what if your part, you know, what if your husband goes to bed at 10 30? Then it's like, oh, so I mean, that's like the classic mom struggle is like you can't have it all. But my husband takes care of her all day and I'm so grateful. So I feel like the biggest gift I can give him is like, boom, you have three hours like <laughs> of you time. So yeah. I think he's really happy to have that. And just like I don't work five days a week. I work three days a week, you know, so this is only happening three days a week. But okay, what I'm hearing is don't give up. Keep keep making sure she sees my face. 
I don't know. Do you think the crying is because I know you don't do any crying, but I'm like, I just feel I like I wouldn't she, do that. The crying, I wouldn't yeah. let her cry. I like this is know. this is what I would do. I would inform her of the new plan, yeah. and I would make a plan where bedtime is is officially like because you know with your current routine you don't have special mommy Layla time built into that routine yet. So you need to build it into the routine. So you might need to extend bedtime, but let's not get too crazy about it. I would maybe make it 930, Mm -hmm. not 10, but like 930. And now we're no longer feeling like we're rushed for this 9 p.m. bedtime. And we're very strict on ourselves about this 9 p.m. bedtime. We know that bedtime is now 930. So that's like the new baseline. And then you would tell her like every night we're going to have mommy Layla time and like you like make it like special and exciting and she gets to pick or like, and I would make it like you, you, you could do reading, but I maybe wouldn't do it in the bedroom. I don't know. Question mark. But what I found like fills my kids cup the most is like actively playing with them. Like, like sitting on the floor with my phone away and like just engaging them in like whatever they're doing. Like it's, it could be cuddling on the couch, watching something. It could be just, they're playing with Play-Doh. They start giving me food and I'm eating the food. And then I take the Play-Doh and I start playing with the Play-Doh, you know, like, I'm, um, but yeah. And then, you know, you guys do that together and then just incorporating that into your routine and then switching to bedtime after. And just like seeing if that that helps. Yeah. Because it so, is like very – like you probably – as soon as she sees you, it's very like maybe like down to business and there's no like just chill where I'm not – I don't have to eat my dinner. I don't have to take a bath. I don't have to whatever, you know. I yeah. just get to like hang out. That's a good idea. So I'll extend bedtime, maybe after dinner, have like a special Layla – Chelsea moment and then and then start which is funny because see bedtime is like intimate like it is very me and her like I am there during bath washing her face you know like it isn't like I sing read like it's all very me and her but I see how it's not like free it's not like free time so maybe yeah that free time I think I'm still gonna let her cry a little bit because sometimes I swear I'm just like you're just egging me to get back in this room and like there's no there's nothing else that I, I can give you. And I, and also at a certain point, I have to get ready for work. Like I can't just keep coming back in the room. 